Hey Matt, let's just uh, start off with uh, obviously this early in the season to play a big game. How important you think it was this team to get a win in what is a big game seen across the country? Yeah, it was definitely very important to our team. Um, I think we showed a lot of resiliency in the fact that although um, they weren't necessarily um, doing things that we thought they were, we had to adapt to that. Um, they were knocking down a lot of outside shots, which we didn't really think they were going to do. Um, they weren't a great sh three-point shooting team, and they were knocking down shots. And even though you know they hit some tough shots and made us a little bit uh, eerie at the end, um, we have guys that show that they can step up whenever they're needed, and uh, it definitely shows to our next man up mentality. Yeah, Miles, he sorry about that. <laughs> wow, um, talk about hitting the free throws at the end. Uh, five of six. You guys had struggled on the free throw lines, but you seem pretty confident. You won the ball there at the end. You want to take those shots. Um, definitely. <clears throat> um, I, I, I'm not. I'm very. Uh, I was very blessed that my coaching staff and my and the teammates uh, actually had trust in me and believed in me. And with that, it gave me even more confidence. After I had missed my first one, I, I was I was upset with myself, but I, the, everyone told me to stay with it, and I stuck with it. And from there on, after the first one, every everyone just felt good, and I, I'm I'm glad that I had that opportunity to do that. Matt, it seemed like you, you guys had their big men frustrated on the offensive end. Um, did you sense that, and, and how were you able to do that? Um, it, it was definitely had to do with staying down on their shot fakes and staying in front of them. Uh, a couple times they did get past us, and that's where we, we knew we broke down. But um, overall, we, we did, the bigs did a great job of staying in front and uh, walling up, not, not leaving our feet. And then also a lot of credit to the guards. They shrunk the floor. Um, they were digging down, making it really hard for the um, bigs of Tennessee to uh, move anywhere. And it, it helps a ton when they have no room to move, and it, it made our job a lot easier. Miles, um, turnovers were a, p a problem for the team really in the first half and into the second half before you started to kind of stabilize. I know you had a couple of tough moments there. I mean, are you still trying to get acclimated to the court? And can you just talk about those turnovers? Um, I, I guess uh, my mind was think I was thinking too much. Uh, I seen Matt down there. For some reason, Jalen popped in my mind for a hot second for a little bit. <laughs> and I tried to throw a little LU play. I mean, uh, Matt does ask for those. But I mean, uh, maybe I threw a little bit too high. Um, but, uh, you know, everyone makes mistakes, and, that, and that's what I did. And um, I took a lot of ownership for it, but everyone still stuck with me. You know, Coach Mack stuck with me through it. He told me as soon as I came out the game, as I'm learning that, you know, when the game's getting short, uh, coming down to the end, that, you know, st stuff like that isn't necessary. We just keep moving on. And after that, and after the couple turnovers that we had, everyone stuck with each other. We never we never got apart, and that, and that was a great part about it, which made uh, towards the end of the game that much more easier. To follow up on Rick's question about the physicality, you guys scored 44 of your 67 points in the paint, only attempted eight threes as a team. I know a lot of times that's just kind of the way the game flows, but was that by design? Um, I don't know if it was necessarily by design, but what they were sort of giving us. Uh, they weren't really digging down too much in the post. Occasionally they'd come and double, but they were keeping the, the floor spread on defense. So we didn't really have a ton of opportunities to get threes up. But when we did, we had guys knock them down like at the end of the first half and that. But um, overall, I wouldn't say that was our necessarily our game plan, but it's what we got and what we took advantage of. Miles, every time they got close, and when they got it down to two, you hit the three. Uh, what does that do for your guys' confidence that every time they made a run at you, you were able to withstand it and push that lead back? Um, I did realize that as the game was going on, every time they tried to start a run, we had a, a big answer for it, which was great. You know, we, we go to the people that we need to go to, like Samaj, if he creates and something happens, then something happens. If I'm open and I get a shot, then that's that's what the play is. But it, it, it's credit to, to the offense and to how aggressive that we go um, while we're playing offense, that we, each, we all get open shots. And when we need a big shot, um, anyone's ready to answer for it. We knew you were kind of iffy for this game going throughout the week. Um, did you know for a while you would play, or was it just something that you're able to go out and warm ups and feel good enough to go? Um, yesterday, I, I attempted to practice a little bit. I did. I did running, and I, after yesterday, I realized that by the time tomorrow, like today, came around, that my my leg would be feeling a lot better. Um, I, I used things as heat packs while sitting on the bench to keep my leg warm, and and everything. It, it just it, it was great. The the training staff they 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 helped me out a lot and. And which made which made me stay on the court and, and be able to play this, the whole game. Uh, Matt, could you just talk about what it means to beat those guys with two of your starters out? It means a ton. It keeps showing how deep our team is and uh, shows how any man can step up. And um, I think that's going to be the mantra of this season for us: is that 
you know, when one guy da one guy's down, another guy's up. And um, even when some guys have tough games, like I felt that I wasn't hitting a lot of shots or I wasn't making the easy ones, you have guys like Miles, Samaje, Brandt, you have any, any one guy that can step up. And they, for the most part, do their job. You know, they have a assigned job and they do it. And um, credit to all of our teammates and the coaching staff and putting us in the right position. Matt, how, how big is this for you guys to have this win against the team that you could potentially face here in about three weeks in the Bahamas? It's, it's huge. It um, you know, gives us a little weight off of our shoulders. So when, when we're going into Battle for Atlantis, when we're going into Moorhead State, Miami, Ohio, all these teams, it, it gives us the confidence going into the game that, you know, hey, we beat a team that, you know, have been recognized as being very, very good. And you're not gonna, another team's not going to come in and just walk all over us. It sort of helps us out in that sense, and uh, I think we'll be ready for a lot of teams. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm really proud of our team. You know, I thought we um, competed from the opening tip all the way to the bitter end, and we had to because you know Jordan McRae and some of those shots that were going in at the end. Um, it's never easy. It's never easy to finish a, a game against a, a really good team, a team that we had a lot of respect for coming in. I feel like they're probably one of the most physical teams in the country. I know we haven't played that many teams, but I don't know if there'll be as imposing of front lines as what we saw to, you know, uh, front courts as we saw today. Um, I'm really proud of our kids. I thought we battled. I thought Isaiah Fillmore, Matt Stainbrook, uh, James Farr, Eric Stanger, uh, those guys around the basket uh, did an unbelievable job to out-rebound Tennessee in back-to-back -back years. You know, we, we went down there and we lost the game a year ago, um, and we out-rebounded them by 17. Uh, this year we out-rebounded them by six. Uh, it says a lot about our kids. You know, we don't have a lot of out-of-the-area rebounders, but we have kids that block out. Uh, I think our guards did a much better job rebounding. To me, that's, that's how you win and lose games. We kept them out of transition for the most part, but it's, it's hard to hold down a team as talented as Tennessee for the entire game. But um, I give our kids a lot of credit for being able to hang in there to the end and uh, come away with the win. Coach, your, your backcourt gets a lot of credit and a lot of talk, obviously, because of Samaje and his, his ability. But the way the front court played tonight, and you mentioned the physicality they played with, uh, is, is that, I don't want to say unexpected, but how surprising is it how well they played against such a good front court? I, I don't know if it's unexpected. You know, Rick Carter uh, on our staff was at Missouri a year ago, and, and when he first got to Xavier and saw our bigs, he said, hey, we, we've got some really talented bigs. You know, he felt like we had more talent than, than, than what he saw a year ago, and they had, they had some really good ones there with uh, Alex Oriaki and the like. So uh, we feel like we have some talented bigs. We, we feel like we have um, a talented team. The key to our team, like any team, is to continue to grow, to stay together, not worry about who gets the credit. Um, and nights like tonight, hopefully, cement that winning feeling matters more than maybe how we do individually. You know, our guys have, have done a great job with that all year. But we felt like we had a good, a good front court coming into the year, and they proved it tonight. But they got to prove it every game. You guys came out with a huge energy level and held them to one for 17 shooting. Um, can you talk about that and what you were doing defensively to keep them on their heels? Uh, I, I think you know our game plan, Shannon, was to make sure that uh, we really crowded the post players. We, we really wanted to keep our defense tight. Uh, that's who we are, regardless of who we play. But with Tennessee, it's especially important because Jarnell Stokes can get you in foul trouble really quickly. Pretty soon, he can have four or five offensive rebounds and a half. And the next thing you know, uh, now, they're, now they're dangerous from, from all different areas. We felt like we'd swallow a couple threes uh, as long as we did a, a really good job of battling post play and not giving second shots, making sure that they had to settle, settle into the half court. If you don't turn the ball over and you get back when the shot goes up on your end um, and keep them in the half court, then you have a much better chance of doing that. And I thought we did that for the most part. But again, because of fatigue, the fact that Brandon and Samaje play 78 of 80 uh, minutes, uh, it becomes a lot easier said than done. So I give those kids a lot of credit. Your 40% of the 75% that we're going to play ended up being Miles playing, Justin not playing, D not playing. Is that <clears throat> what you knew going in, or were you, you did not know until maybe today who was going to play? I have to tell you if I knew. No, I, I, I don't know. Um, I was hopeful that they play. You know, Fluker 
our trainer talks in tongues, so sometimes I can't understand whether our players are going to be able to play or not. You know, with concussion testing uh, being what it is, um, I'm not going to go there. But um, you know, we just I didn't know, and um, I didn't want Tennessee to know either. Well, um, sorry. well you, you mentioned like the, the energy. Uh, Eric Stanger seemed to be a guy who really, really brought some tonight. Uh, is that something you fully, you've always expected of him? I mean, I don't have to ever worry about Eric um, not bringing effort, not bringing energy. He's going to play his tail off. Um, he, he has so much respect in the locker room amongst teammates because he's the same guy every single day. You know, if I didn't play Eric one minute tonight, he would have been over on that bench cheering everybody on to the bitter end. You know, there's no, like, what am I getting out of this? Eric gives – everything he has for the team. And there have been games where I didn't play him because I felt like uh, it wasn't advantageous for our team to do so. Doesn't say a peep. There's been some games where I, where I play him 25, 30 minutes, and he has his best game. You, know, you don't know the difference. And, and uh, any coach would take a ton of Eric Stangers. Coach, what did you, uh, I'm, I'm joining the party late, and I apologize if you can ask this, but you know, what were you thinking and telling your guys when <clears throat> If anything, when Tennessee's like, I don't know, whatever they want, one of 19 from the floor or whatever to start. We just wanted to be able to be uh, a team that really packed in the lane, that really provided um, help around guys like Stokes and Maimon, knowing that those two guys can put a lot of fouls on us and they can do damage. We knew how talented Jordan McRae was. You know, we knew how talented a guy like Josh Richardson was. What wasn't, we weren't sure if Antonio was going to play or not, and obviously he comes in and, and changes the game a little bit. But you have to give a little bit of something. And the only thing that we were going to give them was a perimeter shot a little bit, late contest. But we were not, at least on paper, not going to want to give them any offensive rebounds and not let them get out in transition. We did it in the first half. We did it for about half of the second half. And I think that's why it um, you know, got a little closer, because they're a talented team. They're a good team. Coach, it's November 11th, and you've got one of those you know, resume bullet point wins already on your resume. You know, how satisfying is that to have it in the second week of November? Well, we can't look backward. I mean, I know we're, we're excited. We're going to enjoy this one. Um, but we, we, we play a good Moorhead State team. We went on the road tonight and won. And they may not have the name of Tennessee, uh, but you, know, you, you see games all the time where, where you sort of scratch your head. And we've got to be a mature group. We've got to be able to go from one game to the next with the total focus on our team and not our opponent. And that included tonight, and that will include Friday night. But uh, it's very satisfying because um, I don't want to say our kids deserve victory, but they've been working really hard. They, they want to have a special year. Um, and to beat a team like Tennessee, I'm proud of our kids. Samaje had another tough night at the free throw line, missed six shots. What can he do to be a better free throw shooter? Uh, you know, it's a little bit mental for him right now. You know, I just think he needs one of those games where he goes 7 of 8, he goes 10 for 10, and those games are coming. He, you know, he just hasn't uh, been in that situation a whole lot this year like any of our players. But, um, you know, we just, uh, just got to keep repping it. You know, we got to put pressure on him during uh, practice. Uh, and, you know, he's got to get a little success. And when he does, you know, he'll, he'll be fine.